At the end of last episode, I suggested that the solution to our problems, the way out many of us are seeking, lies within. But what does that even mean? It means that whatever your ailment, whether it's a dysfunctional relationship or a boring job, depression or anxiety, boredom or poverty, you already have the remedy. It means that whatever the obstacle standing in your way, you already possess the tools needed to dismantle it and move ahead. Now, I know this is hard to believe. I know because I had a hard time believing it myself. Even as I experienced the truth, I remained skeptical. The idea that we have at our disposal all the necessary ingredients for manifesting the kind of life we crave to live flies in the face of everything we've been taught since birth. So no, I'm not asking you to take my word for it. But on the other hand, there's no way that I can really prove this to you conclusively. I can explain it to the best of my abilities. I can cite sources. I can even illustrate my point with cute little anecdotes. But at the end of the day, the only way that you can figure out whether this is real or not is to try it out for yourself. I spent an entire decade of my life finding out firsthand, so I guess I consider myself a bit of an expert on the topic. I didn't like school, so I dropped out. I didn't like construction, so I went back to school, and then back to construction. All the while I longed to be a writer, but during this time in my life, I didn't commit a single word to the page. I told myself that I was too tired from working all day, or too busy with school to write anything meaningful. And then there's Victoria, the city that I call home, world renowned for its beauty and laid back pace of life. People from all over want to live right here. But for this decade in my life, I wanted desperately to move as far away as possible. It's too small, I complained. It's too expensive, I bemoaned. This was like a mantra for me and I repeated it to myself day after day. The point is this, no place, situation, or person was ever good enough for me. I was never satisfied. I always felt trapped. Hence my never-ending search for a way out. You've probably heard people say that the grass is greener on the other side. Well, hidden within this worn-out platitude, we find an essential truth about the human condition. It's not that the grass is actually greener on the other side, but rather that it seems that way to us. Whatever we have, we tend to want something different, something bigger, faster, or newer. Wherever we are, we tend to want to be somewhere else, sometimes anywhere else. Whatever we're doing, we wish we could do something more meaningful, more rewarding, or maybe just more enjoyable. But ask anybody who's ever crossed over to the other side, and they will likely tell you that the grass is no greener. Hell, sometimes there's no grass to speak of, only the barren soil of regret and longing for whatever we left behind. Take it from me. I indulged the urge to escape every time it reared its ugly head. And what I discovered is that the new was no better than the old. Different? Absolutely. Worse? Sometimes, but no better. It wasn't until I was cornered with no escape possible that I finally surrendered. And that's when I realized that the escape route, the way out, had been hiding underneath my nose all along. It turns out that the problems from which I was trying to escape were not the problems at all. That's why, no matter how many of them I solved, new ones were quick to take their place. I saw problems everywhere I looked, not because they were actually there, but because the way I was looking at things was the real problem. What are you doing in my house? Get out of here. Problems. In other words, the problem wasn't university or construction work or the cost of living in my hometown 
or my inability to write or any of the other circumstances I had previously identified as problematic. My entire perspective was the problem. As a result, I kept on perceiving problems where none existed. In a letter penned to his friend Lucilius in the first century CE, the Stoic philosopher Seneca the Younger writes the following. Are you surprised that after such long travel and so many changes of scene, you have not been able to shake the gloom and heaviness from your mind. You need a change of soul rather than a change of climate. Why do you wonder that globetrotting does not help you, seeing that you always take yourself with you? The reason which set you wandering is ever at your heels. My friends, despite the centuries separating us, I'm convinced that Seneca was writing this letter to me. See, I wasn't escaping my problems, merely exchanging one place for another, one job for another, one relationship for another, and bringing all of my problems with me every step of the way. Meanwhile, what I was seeking, the solution, the way out, the life I yearned to live, was available to me then and there, here and now, and under any set of circumstances. As another great Stoic philosopher once wrote, very little is needed for a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Now, if you think that sounds too simple or too easy, think again. To become aware of the way you think and to change it in a way that makes a happy life requires patience, persistence, and discipline. Because the way you think isn't something you consciously choose for yourself. Instead, it's conditioned into you, subliminally, over the course of many, many years. For this reason, you can't change it overnight or even at will. Especially when you're immersed in a culture that reinforces and triggers the old pattern of conditioning. This, of course, begs the question. Is it even possible to take control of your mind? And if so... Is it worth the effort? To which I would emphatically reply, yes, yes, and yes. Yes, 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 double yes. Yes, I think you should do it. I think it's good for you. I wouldn't be here talking to you today if I didn't think it was A, possible, and B, a worthwhile endeavor. Is it an uphill battle? That I can't deny. It is an uphill battle, but like most learned skills, it gets a little bit easier with time and practice. And unlike the other methods and solutions that promise to fix your problems from the outside by way of changing your material circumstances, what I'm proposing here works on a much deeper level. It's not a quick fix, life hack, or a miracle cure. It's an immersive, intensive process that attacks problems at their roots declutters the mind, reveals misconceptions, and opens up previously hidden pathways to life's greatest treasures. So then, what is this intensive and immersive process of which I speak? I like to call it spiritual exploration, and I'll tell you all about it next episode. Thanks a lot for watching that episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll tune in for the next one. And like always, don't forget to live well.